right, welcome to the Concrete Garden Solutions and Potions. Today we're going to be looking at making cardamom chai. So with some things that you should probably have in your kitchen cupboards. And if you don't, the little packs coming out to you for the workshops for those. So cardamom, we've got some cardamom here. People are probably familiar with it. It's these little green seed pods that are very, very arom aromatic, very refreshing um, and quite warming. And we're looking at this drink as being a nice warming winter drink that you can take throughout the day, quite refreshing, and you can have it with or without caffeine. So the basics of it are our little cardamom pods, some cloves, which people are probably familiar with as well. And then I'm gonna use some cinnamon bark, just a little half quill of cinnamon bark, but you can also use um, ground cinnamon if you, if you have that. It just sometimes, you might wanna filter it because sometimes there's a slight grittiness with the, with the ground cinnamon. So what, why are we using all these different herbs? Uh, cardamom, like I say, is very warming. It's very, very good for your stomach. So there's actually been some research recently into food allergies showing that cardamom can be really effective when people have what's often referred to as leaky gut, or if you find that you're kind of reacting to certain um, foods in a slightly violent fashion, I would say. Um, so cardamom tea just on its own, which is basically just cardamom in boiled water, can be really nice after meals, maybe in the same way that you would sometimes have a mint tea, but just for something a little bit more aromatic, a little bit more exciting. Cloves are also very warming. Um, both are also quite drying and aromatic. And cloves are classically used for tooth problems and for large intestine problems. So by large intestine problems often means things like food poisoning, when you're finding that you're going to the toilet a lot, and it's not, not very good. For teeth problems, the cloves are fantastic. You can actually just chew a little clove, and these are actually little flower buds. Um, you can chew that for toothache, or you can put a little bit of clove essential oil on your gums, and that's really good for drying things up, reducing inflammation, and removing the kind of gunkiness that you sometimes get with teeth abscesses and things like that as well. Cinnamon, again, similarly, very warming, a little bit drying, um, but it's also very good for uh, regulating blood sugar. So it's a really nice one if you're feeling that you're getting um, like sh sugar rushes or that you're feeling that you're get, get really, really needing to eat because you've, you've not been kind of thinking about your food well enough. Adding some cinnamon into your diet can be really good to sort of regulate that out and make that work a little bit better. So to make the cardamom chai, what we're going to use is a cup of water to three cardamom seeds, a teaspoon of cloves, half of a cinnamon quill. And you can also add some other things towards the end. So you can add something to sweeten it, like honey. You can add other spices like ginger, which warms it a little bit more again. And you can also add just a regular tea bag if you want to go for the, sl the slightly caffeinated option. So first of all, what I'm going to do is measure out my ingredients. So we have some water that's already quite warm here. So if you just use the cup or mug that you're going to eat, drink it from and fill that as much as you want and then just pour that into your saucepan. And then you want three, four, five, I'd say at least three cardamom pods. I've got five there because I quite like cardamom. And the easy, um, it says in the recipe to bash these. No, you can just bash them up on a uh, with like a ruling pen at the end of a knife. But a nice way to do it is to take a large spoon and a small spoon and place the seeds on the, on the large spoon and then just use the small spoon. I don't know if you can hear that crushing noise there. Um, and I'll, actually sometimes what you can just do is get a fingernail in and just open them up a bit. Because what you're trying to do is get at these little seeds inside the cardamom pods. They're the bits with all the flavour. So I'm going to tear those up. Those go into the hot water. There we go. And... So those are, start, those are just starting to infuse already because we've started from warm water. You can start from cold, it doesn't really matter. Um, you've just got wanting to get that well infused. You want to work relatively quickly because you want to get a lid on this pan soon to keep in all those essential oils, which are a lot of the medicinal components of your spices that we're using here. So cloves, I'm going to go for a teaspoon of cloves. A pinch or two is probably about right in terms of them. So there's maybe about 12 of those in. And then I'm just going to pop my cinnamon quill in just now and put the lid, in, lid on and then put that on the heat. So you've got your cardamom, your cloves and your cinnamon quill in your mug of water, just on a nice low heat there. And you want to do that for 10 to 15 minutes to let everything infuse. It doesn't need to come to the boil and you probably get a better flavour of it if, it if you don't over boil it. So you want it just to be like a nice gentle heat. So you can kind of feel the heat coming off it there and you're starting to get the smell there too. If you don't have a lid for your saucepan, putting something over it like a plate would also be really good um, because it, you read, it's those aromatics that you're really looking for in your, um, in your cardamom chai. So once your 10-15 minutes has passed, 
you want to leave that to cool for a little while. So you just turn off the heat, let it cool. Now I'm wanting to have mine with caffeine tea and I, I put my tea bag in at this point because if you kind of heat it with the tea bag in it, you're gonna end up with some very, very bitter, very tanniny tea. So I just put that in to infuse a little bit. So leaving that to cool for 10 minutes. And when that's finished, I've got, uh, here's one I made earlier. If you pour that very gently into your mug, most of the cardamom and the cloves, I'm sorry, the cinnamon quill is very easy to take out without having to strain it, but you can put it through like a little mini sieve or a strainer if you want to. Um, or some people refer to using your teeth strainer, but that can be a little bit, bit odd. But once it's finished, you have this lo lovely kind of brown chai. And that's really warming, really good for stomach and really good for respiratory stuff as well, because we're looking here at things that are very warm and dry, hot and dry spices. And if you think about the sorts of illnesses that people get in the winter, they tend to be cold, damp illnesses. So gunky stomach stuff, gunky respiratory stuff. So this is a lovely little, little kind of tea to have during the day, whilst you're just kind of going about things just to keep, keep yourself nice and regulated, keep yourself warm and stop yourself from getting kind of too mucusy in the winter. Today we're going to look at making a balm for painful tired muscles or for kind of trapped pain um, and for kind of nervous tension and that's made using chilli powder which is hopefully a common ingredient most people are familiar with. Um, I probably don't need to say but even more so than ever do be careful about washing your hands after using chilli because it can linger and it, if you go and poke your eye with a bit of chilli on your finger you're going to know about it. Um, so we caution there. So we're going to make a chilli balm. Um, and that's going to just look kind of look, basically a word for something that's kind of an oil based treatment that's semi solid or solid at room temperature. Um, there's many options for how to make it and um, with different what I would call setting agents. So things like I'm going to show you with cocoa butter, um, also with beeswax is, one, is another option and other butters like shea butter. The process is the same for whatever setting agent you're using, um, but what differs is the ratios. So the ratio of chilli to setting agent to oil will vary between those. Um, so with something like beeswax, you don't need very much beeswax at all compared to how much oil. Um, whereas with cocoa butter, you need a little bit more because the beeswax is just so much more solid and so much more setting. Um, well, the ratios that we've, we're going to be using take a total of 10, if that makes sense. So we talk about if there's 10 parts, you're always one part chili, and then the other nine parts are made up of combinations of oil and setting agents. So with the cocoa butter, we're looking at eight parts cocoa butter to one part oil to one part chili. And just a little bit more math to confuse everybody, because we've got a little 50 gram container here, you we're talking about 50 divided by 10 is five. So we've got five of chili, five of oil, 40, of the cocoa butter and that makes your 50 in total. So I've already started, we've got quite a lot of cocoa butter in here already, nicely shaved and uh, grated. And what I'm going to do is just grate the rest of it. You don't have to grate it. You could just have it in large chunks or small chunks even, but it will dissolve so much more quickly if you grate it. So I'm just going to do this for a minute. Okay, and the last few bits are just a bit bigger, but that's fine, they will break down eventually. You'll have noticed with the beeswax that I showed you, the stuff that I have comes in little, they're almost like tiny, tiny, tiny milky bar buttons, and that's designed so that that will dissolve a bit more quickly as well. Um, if you did have a big chunk of something like beeswax, you'd want to grate that too. So I know that I've got 40 grams in here, so I'm going to take my bowl. This bowl, we're going to be warming this in a bain-marie, so we'll set that up for you in a moment. But I'm going to take this, so I'm going to turn on my scales and then put that to zero. And then that's my 40 grams of cocoa butter. Once I get all the stuff that's stuck to the bottom. And then I'm going to zero that again. And I'm just going to slowly add five grams of oil. So just do that by weight. Well, that's exactly five grams, that was handy. And then I'm gonna get my chilli powder. And I'm gonna zero that again. And then we're just gonna add, so let's see, a teaspoon is often about two and a half grams, but now it's closer to, I'm coming on to four there. It's lovely bright 
chilli powder. So that's five grams of the chilli powder. So I'm going to combine them a little bit first before they go on the heat, just to get the chilli mixed well through. And try and get onto that. And then I'm going to use wooden utensils for the rest of this. Now, what will happen is this is going to really, really coat the bowl. So we're probably not going to get all of this out. So you do want to have some kind of kitchen paper or something to hand so that you can wipe out the bowl afterwards because soap, soap and hot water is not going to work on something that's kind of quite well set. So we're now just going to put this on the bain-marie. So our bain-marie is we've got a saucepan with a saucer in the bottom of it. So I'm just going to pull that out and show you. So the saucer is the same size as the base of the saucepan. We just place that upside down and that provides a little barrier between the um, bam that you're making and the heat at the bottom so we're not going to burn um, that cocoa butter and it also helps to tell us if we're letting the water get too hot because if it starts boiling you can hear that saucer moving a little bit as it is you get a really cr clattery noise with the saucer so I'm going to put this on a kind of medium heat and the key to this is to just obviously don't let it overflow you want you want there to be kind of water contact with pretty much all of your mixture but you don't want any water to get in the top of your bowl. So I'm just stirring this, kind of trying to keep everything moving as much as possible so that the mixture is getting into contact with the sides which are warm, but I don't want it to overheat. And I think actually that might be getting a wee bit warm because I can possibly hear the sauce moving there. And we do we'll get an absolutely great chilli smell off this. So do, if you want to kind of clear out your respiratory system whilst you're making something, this is a great way to do it. So there you can see it's just getting softer and softer. Now if you've been, if you've been a bit stricter with the um, grating, because I was a bit lazy and let some chunks in there, yours might happen a little bit more quickly. But, you know, it, it'll, it'll all come out in the end. So in just that pause, that's starting to get quite liquefied. But you can see some of my big cheating chunks there are kind of getting in the way again. So but also an absolutely amazing colour. Not if you can think that was barely kind of quite, quite a heaped teaspoon, but not much more than a heaped teaspoon. I'm just keeping that moving. But yeah, definitely one to pay attention to. Other things with banmaries, often you can kind of leave it, go have a cup of tea, have a sit down, do whatever. But with this, as you can see, that as we're moving it, some of it's very liquid, some of it's still very solid. So we need to keep that movement and the movement itself will help with the melting a little bit too. So this is what the mix is starting to look like with just one stubborn tiny little bit of cocoa butter that's not quite combined. Ooh, a little bit off the top here as well that I can hook in. So we're just stirring and stirring. And if you want to do actually, you could prob there's probably enough residual heat in this that if you'd rather like turn the hob off and take this off and continue the stirring off the heat that's fine, but I'm pretty sure that's everything well combined, but I'm going to do that. I'm just going to take it and just pop it on the side for a bit, just for a final stir, just so that I'm not on the heat. I'll just turn that off. And that, I can't see anything in there, so that's good. So I'm going to let that cool a tiny bit and then pour it into the container. With If you're using the beeswax, I would not let it cool at all if you can avoid it um, because it will start to really stick to the sides of your, your jar there. So I'm just going to gently, if my calculations are correct, this should just be about right. Just try and combine in a little, just make sure we get all of that chilli in. There we go, it's a moment of truth. Okay, so this is your cocoa butter based um, chili balm. That's quite liquid at the moment. So you're gonna to want to put that in the fridge. And if you want a kind of flat, solid texture, then just leave that in the fridge for a few hours or until it sets and then use that on achy muscles. If you want a more fluffy kind of creamy texture, you can actually take it out every hour or so and just like put a fork through it to, to fluff it up. Kind of like you would if you were making ice cream or something like that. Um, so that goes away in the fridge. And I also just brought to show you um, the same idea, but with the beeswax. So this is a beeswax one that I made yesterday, actually. And you just take that out and you see it's lovely, lovely bright orange. 
and you'll be using that. So very good for like if you've got shoulder pain, back pain, any kind of muscle and jointy things going on. Um, probably imagine the kind of things that you would use Tiger Balm for. This is this chili pain balm is really good for that as well. And once you get used to making it, and if you if you like it, you can up the amount of chili in it. Um, I've started at the low end because some people just find that they they don't tolerate chili so much. So as you get more kind of if you get more into it, adding more chili as you go along, it can take you could kind of up, up that to sort of two teaspoons of chili quite easily within um, that 50 grams. So that was our chili pain balm.